Today, we are going to get an education on some awesome case knives. Uh, I heard rumor that presidents have carried case knives. So Dwight Eisenhower would give our case, it's a small pin knife, he would give them to estate gifts when people would come That's to the White so House. That's so cool. How's it going guys? Welcome to Knife Banner and today we are going to get an education on some awesome Case Knives. Case Knives is celebrating their 130th anniversary of American-made greatness. So we were actually brought Mari on yes, from sir. Case Knives. Thanks for coming. Uh, glad to be here, yeah, glad yeah. to be here. And uh, he's gonna run us through some some stuff that you may not know about the traditionals that Case does. And then we're gonna look at some new shiny stuff that you may not have seen yeah. that Case is kind of exploring. Some, some new exciting stuff. And then uh, at the end, we've got an awesome giveaway thanks to Case Knives. So make sure to stick around. So. Let's dive in. Let's do it. What do we got on the table first? Well, we've got a lot of things. You know, Case has been around for a long time, so we use a lot of handle materials. Um, one thing that sets us apart, I think, in the industry, when you look at what is different about a Case knife, a lot of times it is a material. So a lot of what we've shown here is just various patterns. Uh, case makes, uh, you know, we have about 1,200 active SKUs in our catalog wow. assortment. So it's a lot to keep up with. Uh, but when you dial that down, there's a lot of core assortments and core patterns that are in most of our family. So uh, it's really the materials that we put on there. Okay. Uh, case knives are made by hand, 160 hand operations go into each case knife. So when you look at the materials, uh, you look. we do a lot with bone, uh, we do a lot with bone, we do some specialty stag and some, we can use buffalo horn and mother of pearl and things like that, that a lot of your traditional manufacturing couldn't use because it's it's very labor and hand intensive. Yeah. Uh, that kind of gives us, kind of gives us an edge, I think, and uh, just the way our artisans are able to uh, to really take a piece of bone and to make something as, as pretty as this. So. Yeah, so something like this, this would be, uh, now, you guys know, I try to keep up on the, the traditionals thing. Right. <laughs> I don't know all the patterns by heart, I'm sorry. Come on, Zach. This is not my thing me? all the time. Yeah. Um, I have been slowly converting over to okay. slip joints, though. Well, good. I, I, good I, I am digging on the slip joints lately. But, so we've got, this is this would be a, a, a Texas toothpick, right? Yes, that's our medium this Texas toothpick. This would be toothpick. a medium, right? Okay. So, historically, we made a small, medium, and large. We still make the small and the medium. Uh, but yeah, it's just a really cool blade style and design. Oh, yeah. uh, and that's a bone handle. So we yeah, take, handle. we'll take we take a bone handle and we jig it. It's kind of texturing. Uh, that one actually is amber bone. So we dye it and then we burn it. So it really gives it some really unique looks. We'll do some bolster artwork on that to kind of dress it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but still a great carry knife. Um, so it, it's, it's fantastic. And just really kind of, to me, some of those things really showcase what our artisans can do. Because sure. uh, I, I feel like, of course, I'm a, little, I'm a little biased, but I don't think anybody can do it as good as our folks. No, I like that. And then, and then you have things like when you're using an actual stag. Yes. Right now, what would this pattern be called? So that's a peanut. This is a peanut. Um, okay. it, it's one of my favorite patterns. We were talking about that earlier. It's one I I've keep for my son who's grown now, but uh, he loved it. But it's a great. It's a small size knife, like two and seven eight inches. Uh, it's got stag, and that's actually the antler of a deer. So that you know, it's it's hard to do that again because of our manufacturing processes. A lot of people couldn't do that, but uh, Case does it better than anybody. The only problem now is you can't get stag. Um, oh, okay. A lot of our materials we have to import because of the nature of the material, right. not because it's cheaper by any means. But the best stag, and I think where most of historic manufacturers have used, is from the Indian sambar deer. Okay. And there's an embargo on any stag leaving that country. Oh, Probably wow. has been for about 15 years. Uh, there was some pre-embargo stag that we had for a while, and we did some larger pieces, but. We currently can so only So now you're do, down to the peanuts. We're, we're peanuts and small <laughs> Texas toothpicks. Uh, there's gotcha. a few small stockmans, but uh, you won't find many larger pieces of stag in the market. Uh, it's really a shame because it is beautiful. It is. I it mean, is beautiful. And, and so if you're interested in getting a stag, something stag, you got to jump on one of these. Yes, because, absolutely. Uh, sounds like stock's really and, low. And, and when our supply is gone, and we, we got quite a few. No, of course, quite a bit, yeah, but when it's you. gone, it's gone. It's and gone. We're like, yeah. and we've and we've tried. We get people all the time ask us, "Why don't you do the domestic uh, whitetail or or mule deer or whatever it is?" And some of the antler is just too porous. So we've oh, tried. It's not again. It's not because there's no reason other than the fact that we can't use what's available. So right. that's why we we import some stuff, or it's the best there is in the world. So cool. um, some oh, cool great. stuff like that. All right, now I recognize this pattern. This is a Barlow. Barlow. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I own a Barlow, oh, so good. I can I can I can good. confidently speak on this one. Yes. Um, now this one's a little special. What's the story on this it, Barlow? It is special. So you know, a lot of people have made Barlows over the years. It's not it's not something that's totally unique to Case, um, but we've made them and we've done very well with them. So this is part of our vault program. So the last two years, and this is the third year into the program, we'll pick a what would have been a retired or a. a pattern like that that was in the vault and we'll make it for one year. It's kind of the uh, bring it out one year production and then we put it back in the vault. Cool. So we started that with a Congress pattern. Last year we did a doctor's knife. This year it's the Barlow and I can tell you 
its own pace to outdo them all. So yeah. people people love that. You know, I, I do feel like there's a trend back towards traditional and slip joints. Thank you. I hope, I hope you're yeah. on that too. <laughs> Keep you on that bandwagon. But um, but this has a, a huge following, and and this is, uh, is something we'll only make this year. We're making a lot of materials, but um, this bone stag is one of my favorite. I told you that stag is not available. Well, this is an example of what we did with bone is we actually – Took the knife, uh, we can hand jig it, mm-hmm. and then we can flame treat it so it looks like stag, yeah. even though it's genuine bone. So awesome. we call that 6.5, and if we if we dive into our handle material scale, I can tell you what that technically means. But right. <laughs> most things at Case, if you if you dig a little deeper, there's a reason, and everything is... Uh, and that, yeah, that's something that I've noticed with Case knives, and, yes. and a lot of traditionals in general, is is yeah, you, the, their, every little thing means something. Everything means something. There, um, there are not any random numbers or letters or dots. Uh, or X's on a case knife. It all it yeah. all has significance. Well, yeah, and that's exactly. So so walk me through really quick. Walk me through, or walk us through. Um, yeah. So so every case knife has got a series of numbers and stuff going on. Right. So, so every every case knife, and, and for example, this one, that's a pattern stamp. So every case knife will have a date stamp that you can tell what year it was made, and it will also have a pattern stamp. So you can uh, it gives our manufacturing folks fits because. Our case blades, even though they're the same, they're not interchangeable with with handle material to handle oh, material. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because every number on that means something. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, that's going to have the six point five, which is the handle. Uh, okay. It's going to have the the two, which means it's a two blade, and it's going to have the oh oh nine and a half, which is that pattern for the Barlow for us. <laughs> that's so crazy. I'm telling you, it, it's, everything has got a, got I, a meaning. No, I love it. I and, love it. And we do the same on the dating, and the dating is on the primary blade. Oh, so, okay. if you show that one, uh, you will see should be a random dot under the case double X. Mm-hmm. Um, and that dot is means that that was done in 2019. Okay. So we started in the 70s. Uh, next year we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary of the dot dating system, but uh, a series. So we start with 10. So in the beginning of a decade, we'll start with 10, and then we'll take one away each year. Oh, so okay. in 2019, it, it stands to reason that we just have one dot left. One dot, yeah. And yeah. then uh, 2020, we'll, we'll unveil a big tank stamp, and that'll be our the next decade tank stamp. So. Cool. That's really nice. uh, but if you go back and people, you know, a lot of people love to date their case knives. Yeah. Um, find out, you know, they, they'll tell us, well, my grandfather gave me this knife. Can you tell me how old it is? Well, uh, prior to 1970, we can get in the period. But usually I can say, yeah, that was 1973. If it's That's after, about right. That's about that's right. That's cool. So, that's really cool. So it, it's fun and it's uh, it, it kind of engages our consumer into that, into the case world. So Yeah. Well, and, and talking about, right, this there's this huge tradition with case, you know, dating a knife or yes. anything. Case knives are collector knives. Yes, that's how everybody sees them, right? Well, in, in my growing up, yeah. case knives were just a user, right? right? Like you just right. used your knife, yes. right? But I've I've talked to guys, you know, and a lot of you guys out there, I've talked to you guys out there that they've got three hundred case knives. They've got three hundred case, you know, knives. and and it's like, well, what's in your pocket? Yeah, and they pull out a whatever, and yeah. it's like, well, why didn't you carry a case? And they're like, well, too nice to carry. <laughs> too nice a case. to carry. <laughs> and you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Zach. We have really put a strong marketing emphasis on that too, because we case knives have a lifetime guarantee. Yeah. Every one of these knives will hold up. And if they're if it's an heirloom and it was your grandfather's, you can send it back and get it fixed or or refurbished. But uh, people are afraid to carry them, and we're like, man, we need to do something to educate folks that uh, give them permission, if you will, which is kind of odd for us to say that. But <laughs> you know, get that knife out of the cabinet or from under the bed and put it in your pocket because okay, it's going to be a good one. You guys heard heard it here first. You have permission <laughs> to use your case knife. Please, please use your case knife. And well, if and you lose it, you can buy another one. That's yeah. kind of from the sales there, side. There it's you like, go, right? Yeah. What happens if I lose it? Well, just buy another one, Just man. buy another one. Yeah. No big deal. We're making them every day. So. All right. Now, so talking about unique uh, handle materials and stuff, you got some buffalo, yes. right? Uh, buffalo horn is kind of like stag. Yeah. It's, it's a real exotic material. Uh, and, and you'll find a lot of that with case. We'll use buffalo horn, mother of pearl, abalone. Um, but our, our folks that like it, it's a premium handle material, but it makes a beautiful knife, too. Yeah, it's it, really, it definitely does. And really you were mentioning special. earlier, when you're talking about jigs and you're talking about handmade one of the benefits of uh, the way that you guys do things is you can take these abnormal materials, yes, right, and and hand shape them because right. you can't throw that. Is it, well, you probably could, but it probably wouldn't be easy to throw right. that into like a CNC machine or something, it, exactly. and have it come out with what you want. Yeah, right? we, we without have a, wasting a ton of material. We have what you know. At Case, obviously, we have we have innovated and we've got some state of the art equipment, but we have product in our factory that's like a manual cover line, and that's where you take the material that. It's not always the funnest job, but I tell you, it makes the best knives. So they yeah. will manually do those by hand. Uh, they'll do cutting and they'll they'll shape them and fit them and you know match them if they need to be matched. Wow. So it's it is a very hands on manual process. But but again, as like we said, that's what makes Case different is yeah. that we take that material, and the artisans at Case are just phenomenal. Most of them have been there. 
most of their life, and it's yeah. what they love to do, and it's it's great. Speaking about most of their life, <laughs> yeah. you were telling me I was I was asking uh, Mari before I was I asked him as well, like what are your employees and how how are things there? And people love to work there. He's they said you said the average was the eight, average eighteen now, years a couple years ago. Yeah, the average b- before was, we had a big hiring. You yeah. know, obviously if we hire fifty people, right, it's going to bring it down. Yeah, 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 but. But before that, it was like 18 years, and that was average. And we have yeah. we have a 25 year club, a 30, a 35, a 40 year club, and there are surprisingly a lot of people in those now, 35 and 40 year clubs. Now, do you have a 60 year club? Because I heard well, a rumor you had a gal that worked so for you for what 60 plus. It, it was right? 60. I, actually, I, I, I want to check my math. So, I, yeah. and one, you know, obviously we're not hiring. Right. Kids, yeah. but I think it was 70 years she retired, <laughs> and her name was Mary Petro. Mary and Petro. Even even the Today Show did a little uh, stint on it because cool. it was such a great thing. Uh, she started, you know, back in the turn of the century. It wasn't yeah. uncommon to be fourteen or fifteen and, and, yeah, working, and, work. and working. So shoot, I mean, you know, just a, just a decade or so ago, I was working at fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Everybody had to work. You just couldn't work in a manufacturing. You just could. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't making that. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. So so she did. She worked at Case for seventy years, and after when she retired, we actually took her around the country so she could cool. meet some of the consumers that she had made knives for forever. And it was a it was a really special moment for the consumer. And certainly for for Mary Petro, but uh, but I mean her story is not that unusual. At Case, we get people that uh, you know some of our best model makers and some of our most skilled artisans have been there for forty five or fifty years, and wow. it's it's amazing. But uh, hey, look what they do, man! Yeah, I'd, no, I'd stay too. I'd work. stay too if I could. I, I yeah. couldn't do any of this. I've tried. It's terrible. <laughs> you do not want me making knives, man. <laughs> Doesn't come out the way you want. No, it to. <laughs> no, 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 no. They would always put them to the side. We'll fix that one later. So. <laughs> So. All right, so uh, some some awesome. Now, what was in this buffalo? What was what's the pattern here? Uh, so that's a mini trapper. Mini trapper. So that okay. that is one of our very core case patterns. So yeah. uh, you look, it's probably in our top five patterns, okay. but it, it's a very good pattern. Um, the next one that you see there. Now that's our trapper. Okay, so that this is, is the, the full size. That's full size trapper. trapper. That is the signature Mac Daddy case knife. I mean, a trapper is one that we'll make in every material probably that we make. Uh, we do a lot of special things with a trapper. A lot of our commemorative items that you'll see will will feature a trapper, trapper. Just because people people now, love to carry. It's a good size. And now you said Mac Daddy. This is the Mac well, Daddy. Just the, <laughs> just the. Uh, I'm, I'm from the South. No, man. I love it. I yeah, love it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is the. Uh, it, we make more trappers than we make any right, other. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just, it's just something I'm gonna have to start using. Okay, Mac you. Daddy. I, I, I like it. it. Yeah, you're welcome to use that anytime. Oh, perfect. Yeah. perfect. <laughs> so it, it's great, and you know. Places in the country that we do extremely well, and I know you guys too, but like in Texas, um, a case trapper is practically legal tender in Texas. You, right. can get, you can get anything you want done with a case trapper. So, yeah. uh, But it, it's a fantastic pattern, and, and again, it's just very signature case. Great. Um, and then uh, this now this is a synthetic kennel material. Right? Yeah, we, we you know we're known for our natural materials, but some of our you know if you looked at a case yellow handle, a lot of people will oh, yeah. recognize that. I love as, the yellow handle. That man. was my grandfather's knife. Oh, I yeah. always say that. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me go ahead and say there's nothing wrong with what your grandfather carried. To me, there's nothing. Uh, there's no better endorsement than what your granddad carried. Yeah, so very true. Uh, a lot of people will think, well, that's uh, that's a granddad's knife. I'm like, yeah, that. You only wish you could be half the man your grandfather was. That's sometimes. here's the thing. The, like you know, case knives, traditionals, whatever we want to call like. I mean, that's what built America. Absolutely. Right? That's what built where we are, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, so. so if it's your granddad's knife, it's a good knife. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> uh, but a lot of those are synthetic. So this is our American Workman series, and that's our red synthetic. So we'll yep. do, we've got orange, yellow, red. Uh, we do a lot of synthetics too. Um, a lot of that is price point driven. You know, we want yep. folks to be able to carry the knife, please. And also, you know, you can get a good knife, and it's, you know, it's not going to be one that you're worried that you might lose. Um, but it carries the same warranty, same steel, manufactured the exact so same still, way. So still still lifetime and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Now you, now, you said this is a workman. Now, I know with traditionals, there's a lot to do with both the pattern and then the blades inside, right? Yes. I'm going to try not to yes. cut myself here because I know this You're is You're scaring me a little bit. So. Yeah. You know, I'm just not going to try to get that it, one out with the it, other yeah. two. Yeah. Here, yeah. I'm going to let the pro do it. I'm going to let the pro do it. The trick is there open is, this one all the way. There it is. There it is. Open this one all the way. But yeah, this is a traditional stockman, so it's a three-bladed knife. Okay, great. It's got the clip, the spay, and the cheap foot blade. And a lot of Stockmans will be the same way. But yeah. the Stockman is our number two Mac Daddy knife, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> we make, uh, between the Trapper and the Stockman and the Mini Trapper, uh, we'll make more of these than than most of the others combined because great. it's uh, just a great carry knife. It fits in your pocket well. Um, yeah, this is three and seven eighths inches, so it's yeah. not it's not too big. Uh, some people don't like to carry the Trapper. They feel like it's a little much unless you're yeah, out in the field working all day and then it's great. But right. if you're, you know, have an office job or 
opening boxes, whatever you're doing, they like a medium stockman. Yeah. And three blade options give you a little more. Yeah, give you a little more. And, and talking about something maybe a little more pocket friendly, um, this here, this is a, a Bose collaboration, correct? Yeah, we do. Uh, we work with uh, famous custom knife maker Tony Bose. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's world famous. He's one of the most, probably the one of the best known, in our opinion, the best uh, slip joint custom mm -hmm. knife maker. Uh, make some beautiful knives. So we we enlist him on two fronts. One is we do an annual collaboration every year, and those are knives that that it's a Tony Bowes pattern, and everything is wire cut and it is fit and finished. And Tony's in our factory helping us get that right. Cool. And that works. We do a thousand piece run every year. That okay. takes yeah. our most skilled folks. There's only about five people in the factory that can do that. Even though they're all good at everything, they're not all equipped. Well, yeah, to do you got because there's a difference between being really good, right? Being, being right. a journeyman and then being yes, a master. Exactly. Right? And, exactly. and if you're making a bows, you got you got to be the master. master. You got to exactly. be the master. Yeah, yeah. The second thing that we do, and actually the travel lock falls into that category. So we work with Tony on new knife designs. So you know, at Case, there's always something new. There will be tons of new stuff, but we all the time we're looking at what is the next knife pattern that we need to do. And sometimes we, if you look at Tony's, a lot of his are historic in nature, but he'll put his spin on it. Oh, yeah. So this was a tribal lock and we, uh, this is in our product line. So this is not the collaboration, even though it's marked with a TB in that pattern stamp. It's which got means, in the stamp, yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. means it's his design, Cool. Uh, but it goes through our standard manufacturing process. So this is a traditional case pocket knife. Not a collaboration, but a Tony Bowes design. So that's great. Uh, we do both of those, and we've had great success in everything that we've done with him. So yeah, he does he's a absolutely amazing work. And if you ever want to, if you ever want to banter it. somebody, you should yeah. banter Tony Bowes. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. go down in the comments if yeah. we need to get Tony on, guys. We'll, we'll find right. a way to make it happen. That, that's right. He would do it. He would do it. Do you have a beat button on there? In case yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd no, be awesome. Tony's a fantastic guy. So That'd be awesome. We're honored to get to work with him. Um, now the next one up. This one's this one's a little special. Uh, it's kind of a special edition, right? Yes. So yeah. we did, we launched this year at SHOT Show, uh, Stripes of Service, and we did, we launched the blue line and the red line. You know, I think there's never been a time in my lifetime, at least, that, you know, law enforcement and, and some of the folks are under more scrutiny. And it's like, you know, man, we need to, we need to show our support for these guys because they're putting their life on the line for all of us every day. Uh, the stripes of service really falls into that. So it's a bone handle. It's a smooth black bone. Yeah, I thought uh, this was synthetic yeah. when I felt it, but no, it's bone, which it, is awesome. It is bone, yeah. and then it's uh, lasered, and then we pour an acrylic inlay to actually get the stars and the stripes in there just fantastically. But, oh, yeah. Um, so this, and this is going to go just kind of in support. You know, again, this is for those that have fallen in the line of duty and also those that just put their life on the line every day. So we've got the blue line and we're going to do the red line. Um, we've just been staunch supporters of military and law enforcement uh, throughout our 130 years. Yeah. So this was something we felt like was uh, was timely yeah. just from the consumer standpoint. And, and I think they turned out beautifully. We oh, got, no, they're wonderful. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of this 130-year history, law enforcement and supporting the United States through production right. and other things, uh, I heard rumor that presidents have carried case knives and they used to they give have, them away as state gifts. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so we have a pattern. It's it's not in production now, but it may be in the years to come. Yeah, it might come uh, like the Barlow. It may be like the Barlow. Yeah, Maybe like go, the Barlow. Yeah. We have what we call, we actually named the pattern the Eisenhower pattern. So, okay, Dwight, so. so Dwight Eisenhower would give our case, it's a small pin knife. Uh, stag handle was his favorite. Yeah. Um, so he would give that to his friends. He would give them to, as state gifts when people would come That's to the White so House. That's so cool. <laughs> and we would put his signature on it. So we still put his signature on it. That's really and, cool. When we made it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is fantastic. But Dwight Eisenhower has given them. We've made knives for Ronald Reagan. Uh, we've made knives for a lot of presidents even cool. since then. But uh, and, and that's really some of the mystique of Case. It, it is such a handcrafted piece that it's when you want to honor somebody and you want to give something of consequence and value. Yeah, yeah. Case knife's a great choice. But uh, we've done that. We also um, this year you'll find something really cool in our catalog. But uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the Man on the Moon. Right. And Case made the astronaut's knife. It was the M1 astronaut's knife. <laughs> That's amazing. It, okay, wait, wait, wait. So I, I've heard about this, yes. and when I when I heard Case made an astronaut knife, and that they took with them, right, they took on with the mission, it. every Apollo yeah. and Gemini mission uh, carried this knife. I was imagining it was like a really cool, you know, Case knife. Right, uh, right. But but it turns out it's like a giant machete. It's like it's like a machete. Because <laughs> you never, uh, there could have been aliens. Right? Yeah, there could have been. It, it never <laughs> know. It, it, uh, there are a lot of stories about what would they use this for, and uh, some of the folks that uh, that we work for and with say, well, maybe it's cutting moon pies or something. Oh, I like was, it. I that's like, just that's kind a good of a joke. One. That's a good one. <laughs> it is a survival knife, and it was carried up on all the missions. And that's it's awesome. In the, it's in the museum at NASA, and it's it's one that we're bringing back this year. And it oh, cool. may not be just for one year, but it's certainly the right time to bring it back as we're commemorating and the yeah. country celebrating yeah, 50 years our, of... our walk on the moon. So uh, 
So we've got a we've got an astronaut's knife that's coming. Cool. So if you look back in the history of Case, there's a lot of cool, fun stuff. So yeah. I think that's well, you can't be around for that long and have been in so many pockets and yes. not have a couple. Stories, not have some stories. Right? Not have some stories. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, kind of going back into handle material. Now, what pattern is this? Uh, so that's a mini trapper again. This is a mini trapper uh, again. That's a mini trapper. And then what this this material here is really interesting. So we started about uh, probably four years now using kyanite, and it's a oh, okay. it's a synthetic material. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the gun grips are made with Kieranite. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's probably one of their primary businesses. But it's a, it's got some UV protection coating in there that that make this. The longer you carry it, the shinier it gets, and really it really brightens up. Oh, interesting. Um, so I'm a big micarta guy. Yes. Because I like I like it getting dull. Yes. Right? And and used. Right. But this will actually shine this, more yes. the more you carry it. it. You know, a lot of times you carry you look at a carry knife that you've had in your pocket and it's kind of worn. Yeah. Uh, you won't see that. Now bolsters may be dull. A little of course. Bit, yeah, but, yeah. But the actual material itself will actually enhance over time as opposed to micarta or some of those yeah, yeah. that that kind of wear. That's really interesting. Um, and now this here, what, so what pattern is this? So that is another medium stockman. Another that medium is a, stockman. We, we use a square bolster. Guys, I got to learn how to identify these yeah. things better. <laughs> You're getting there. That's, That's why we brought the pro. This is step one. That's why we brought the pro. So um, first, what do they say? The, the first rule is that admit you got a problem. So oh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting there. I'm getting, getting there. there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm teasing. Um, so this is a wooden handle. We use wooden a lot handle. of wood, a lot of our natural materials. So that is a turquoise uh, curly maple. And, you know, it's not... It doesn't come off the tree turquoise, so obviously yeah. it's, See, a, I'm a, it's a I'm, I'm a carpenter. Too. I've never seen... Yeah, you, you've never seen that color. Yeah. We've got bone that's called chestnut bone, and they're like, wait, how do you do yeah, that? Wait, like, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> we dye it. So, But uh, the wood handles, so we'll use a lot of wood handles. Uh, again, just a lot of natural materials, but the woods have been extremely popular. Uh, we've done everything from reclaimed wood to... Uh, you know, oak, maple, burl, um, just all sorts of the stuff. And yeah, it, awesome. it's good, and it really adds to our product line. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this one here, I'm going to assume this is not a stockman because it's got a single blade. It, it's, it's not a stockman. Ah, there we go. That, See, that, I'm getting that's there. Right. That's right. <laughs> that is our mini copper lock. So oh, okay, yeah, the copper the, lock. I'm familiar with at least the name. Yes. So in the early, 19, about mid-1990s, we introduced the full-size copper lock, and it did really well. The mini copper lock has become one of our best-selling patterns, but uh, it's just got the traditional lock on, on the back. Um, this finish is really unique in that it's what we call pocket-worn. So, you know, case knives have been around for a long time. Yeah, People yeah, would yeah. see us at an event or come up to us and say, man, why don't you make knives like that feel like this anymore? Like, I mean, you have carried that for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You cannot do that out of the box. So, uh, But we actually went to our artisans and said, what if you uh, – what if you – kind of made this knife feel worn. And if you feel the handle, it's smoother. Uh, it's got a oh, much wow. more texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you would have- In comparison to, oh, I see, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like you have carried that. So our pocket worn, you know, our slogan at the time, and it still is, but feels right right away. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a great knife, but the handle, we do that in several bone colors too. But great. the pocket worn is kind of, kind of something again that just kind of, accentuates what our artisans can do yeah. at the wheel. So. Well, and, and I think it also accentuates that, you know, uh, this one locks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it also accentuates, you know, with case knives, it's a rabid following. Yes. Right? I yes. mean, the guys the guys that are into case knives, I mean, they know what every little number means, every little mark, you know, right. they can, I mean, they can just touch the knife and like hold it to their heart and be like, okay, this was 1962. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? That's right. It's, it's, it's impressive. And, and you guys actually have like a collector's club as well, we, right? We do have a collector's club. We are... We're very fortunate in our brand that people are passionate about it. And, you know, I, I don't think there's, you know, an American iconic brand. There's things that you can't recreate, and we could never recreate that passion. It's just developed over years. But Collector's Club, it's a, you know, we, I think it's the largest dues-paying membership maybe in the cutlery industry. Wow. We've got nearly 20,000 members, and these are people that just want to know everything. Man, yeah. they want to, and some of it, it'll, it'll either really impress you or scare you. Yeah. Some people, you know, they, they really want to know that level of detail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they do, they they really, this is their this is their hobby, this is their family heirloom that they're, you know, this is how they connect with their, with their kids and their grandkids. And the Collectors Club, it'll feature stories about collectors. Uh, it'll feature special product or some of the things we're doing at Case. They also right. get access to our, our catalogs that we mail to them. Um, so there's a lot of great features in that. But it is. It's because we have such a group of, of following, and that that paid membership. You know, most people you'll say, I'm not, I don't consider myself a collector. I've only got a hundred knives. <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of consider that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a collector. I you're think you're on the bubble anyway, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're not that, but um, <laughs> so there are a lot. There are a lot of folks that again just want to just want to kind of engage in the brand, and that's cool. something that being American made. You yeah. can celebrate an American made company. Uh, you can celebrate the history and tradition, and then we try to do enough to uh, to just entice them to stick with yeah. us. With the the dating and those things are, 
are, are, are very core to who we are. Well, and, and the, one of the cool things about the Collectors Club is, one, it wasn't very expensive when I looked at it. It's not. It, it, it's was, not, it was no. really affordable, and then you get kind of that insider information, yes. and then you get access to knives that nobody else has access to. Yes. So if you're interested in, in jumping a little bit deeper into your case collection or starting one, um, make sure to use it. Yeah. Make sure to use it, but check out the Collectors Club. Yeah, and, and they cool can thing. sponsor youth because we're really trying to get the next generation, not yeah. only into collecting knives, but just appreciating knives. You for know, sure. that's that's kind of the battle I think for the whole knife industry is, you know, we got to we got to de-weaponize these things and just let people yeah. know that you know these are this was the original hand tool, man. Yeah. This is this yeah. is what everybody should carry and uh, every guy should have, in, in our opinion too, or, or girl too. So everybody should have it. But Collectors Club is good. You're right; it's a very good bargain. Yeah. We spend more on postage than we collect in revenue, so uh, so <laughs> it's fine because we mail four times a year, and we also mail our core catalog to our club cool. as well. So well, and speaking of you know, kind of that idea of the next generation, right? Yes. Or, or getting getting knives into more pockets. Yes. Right. Um, you guys have a kind of a new, I may call it a campaign. I don't know what I'd call it. You kind of, kind of got some new videos yes. up on up on your YouTube page. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure to go check out Casey's YouTube page um, because these videos actually really impressed me. Right. And it's, I, I can't remember the tagline. That's somebody like, who's seen a lot of videos. Too. I've seen a lot of, <laughs> I spent good. a little time on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but what is it? It's uh, keep, keep Your Hand Sharp? Keep Your Hand Sharp. Keep Your Hand Sharp. Check out those videos. They are I, honestly, probably some of the best knife videos I've seen done. Well, we appreciate that. We'll, honestly, we'll share that with yeah, our I'm not, whole marketing I, team. I'm not hyping that. It's yeah. They are so well done. And I think what it is is you guys captured the heritage yes. of case knives, using of the case knives, yes. and then why you need to. Right. right? There's there's some good fidget spinner jokes in there. Yeah, that's right. There's some the good... The like button. And there's the, some uh, get, get yeah. off the phone yes. jokes. Oh, man, I, I dug it. So yeah. speaking of kind of this... This new era of case. Yes. Um, we have we have this knife here. So what's this knife here? So this knife is our. You'll notice the trapper style. The yep. profile is the trapper. Uh, so probably um, eight or ten years ago, we came out with the trapper lock. It was a it was a liner lock trapper, single blade. Yeah. yeah so and, this is a liner lock. Yes. Yep. And so what we did, and we started this last year, was we introduced some patented technology with assisted opening. And for case, that was uh, a this lot a of people deal. felt like, this man, a big deal. what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, you know, and I have to remind them. I said, you know, Case was making automatics in the 1920s. So yeah. we, this is not a departure from our core values as a company. Um, but we had, you know, we put clips on knives, and and folks liked it, and said, you know, assisted opening would work. And so we we did that. So that is our Kickstart Trapper Lock. We took our best pattern, and we put the Kickstart technology in there, and it, it's doing extremely well. Oh yeah, and and it does tie in. You know, you talk about the guy that's very traditional in nature, and I think a lot of folks are trending that way, but. You get some of the features that you really come to love and expect from an everyday carry, and this kind of answers both questions. There. Yeah, I sat down with you guys at the 2018 Blade Show. Yes, and saw the the those when you guys first announced yes. this, and I I was so stoked. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted the the one that came in the yellow, the banana color. Oh yeah, and we got them, and they sold out in like five seconds. Yeah, they go quick. And I was like, gosh quick. dang it! Yeah. So I still need to get one, but I'll be on the ball. Man. I, this this one's good. Yeah, I, this is a really fun one. So this one was launched at Shot Show this year, so it's a 2019 yeah. release with the Kickstart. Yeah. Uh, again, the Trapper Lock's been around for a few years, but not with the assisted feature. So. Kickstart's there. We just started shipping them um, into first quarter, and cool. and these will be available. This will be a staple in the case line yeah. for many years to come. And then this handle here, this is a carbon fiber G10 weave, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So it's got the black and white uh, G10 carbon fiber weave, so very durable, obviously a, a kind of a high tech. Again, you get the traditional, the bolstered pocket knife oh, yeah. with, a, with kind of a more modern uh, handle material, and then the assisted opening feature. So we really felt like putting that kind of handle on a few of those products was, was really a good, yeah, good, good thing way to go. go. All right, so now we're going to jump into something that if I saw, I wouldn't say it was a case knife. Well, so t I, talk to me a little bit I, about this. <laughs> understand, understand. So, and it's not a bad thing. No, it's not. It's not a bad thing. It's not. I, I'm actually really liking this. And one thing you'll see from case, you know, we I, I told you we made automatics in the 1920s. So we've always, in our mind, felt like we were kind of an innovative company. We're always looking for, you know, what is the next feature in a slip joint? What is something else we can do? So we partnered with Southern Grind uh, a yeah. couple years ago. So this is our Southern Grind collaboration. We call it the CG01, the Case Grind 01. That's what that means. Again, everything's got a, everything's everything's got a meaning. Everything's got a meaning. Everything's <laughs> got a meaning. Um, so it was our entry into this, um, you know, kind of the high-end um, performance steel, everyday carry. Yes, because this is S35VN. Yes. Right, and then yes. Uh, aluminum handles. Correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously you got a, a, the two-way pocket clip. There. Yes. So, and, and again, that was our collaboration with Southern Grind. They're all American-made. Yeah. So, and and their story, uh, you know, speaking of law enforcement and military and all that, they are, that is their mission, which yeah. is fantastic. And well, then, and, and speaking, 
I gotta give a little plug for them. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of you guys out there, you guys don't know, Southern Grind is a sleeper. Yes. They're a sleeper brand. Yes. They make awesome knives. They are fantastic. Yeah, and this is no exception. This, it, this case knife is no exception to the awesome knives yes. that Southern Grind puts out. Um, but I feel like a lot of people don't know about them. So I'm glad, I'm glad to see something like this. Yeah, and I think it did help. It helped them, it helped us to kind of bridge that gap. Uh, hopefully it gave them exposure with a new consumer base. Um, and then just to further their mission and to further Case's direction a little bit into, we will never, and I'll say this, we will never depart from our traditional heritage. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is this is everything that who we are. But you will see some, you will see some trending towards, you know, there's a lot of people that are between here and here. And you'll see, you'll start to see some of that from Case. We're really excited about it. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. And the Southern Grind collaboration was something that, you know, again, it made sense at the time. It still makes sense. Um, but getting those knives out there, we did that in the uh, drop point. We also did the Tanto blade in that, and yeah. red and black, and uh, it's doing extremely well. So we're excited about it. Well, yeah, and then mentioning Case, you know, seeing some different things from Case. Yes. So that one's the Southern Grind Case collaboration. And this one here, this is Case. This is Case. So um, we launched this at, at SHOT Show as well. And what's the name on this uh, one? This is a Shark Tooth. Shark Tooth. And if you look at a traditional Case folding lock back, uh, this starts to look like an old Case knife. Yeah, I can very, see the, the lines there. Yeah, anodized aluminum handle, G10 inlay. Uh, it's got that S35 um, VN steel as well. So you've got the performance steel oh, yeah. in there. It's a flipper. Uh, you've got the short pocket clip, which is similar to what we did on the CG01 and what you know we, we're finding from a lot of our customers that they like that short pocket clip. Um, so we're taking what we've learned and we're applying it and we're going to continue to develop it. So we're, cool. we're really excited about that. And and this is starting to ship uh, early second quarter Great. of 2019. So. Well, and I'll tell you what, you know, to be honest, I handle a lot of knives. Yes. And you see knife companies from time to time step out of their wheelhouse. Yes. Where they're, they're like, oh, we want to try something new, which is great. Like, I think companies should be trying new right. things. That's fun. Sometimes those first couple are a miss. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. Sometimes those first couple are a miss. This feels really yeah, nice. It, it feels nice. This I won't is, say there haven't been hiccups to get to oh, this I'm point. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, But the fact but, that this is what's coming coming right. to market, right, as yes. kind of your guys' you know, first run at this, Yes. this is this is a great entry, man. Yeah, it, I, I think so, too. We're really yeah. excited about it. Uh, it's got the shark tooth. We, we kept that. That is a trademark of ours, so yeah. you'll see that on the backside. A lot of people don't understand what that means exactly, but we have the shark tooth emblem on there. Um, but again, we're really excited about this and kind of the the bridge that it's leading to us yeah. to and, and some of our development and some of the things that we're doing. Now you have you have to educate my ignorance. What shark tooth? What is what is that? So it, we have a series. We have a hammerhead. We have yeah. a mako. We have a shark tooth. Um, it is it is material. And we just did a marketing session last week. There. Why are we even putting that on there? Those yeah. things are. It has nothing to do with with fishing or you know. And it was just the shark series from Case back in the, probably the 50s or 60s. Oh, okay. Uh, so we would have uh, one style. And it was a little meatier, and we called that the shark tooth, and uh, had a shark tooth embellishing on the blade, and it was just our shark tooth. Cool. Same thing with our hammerhead and mako. We still make those two, but shark tooth has been retired for a little bit, so, so it's kind a good introduction. Gen two. Yes, that's right. There we go. <laughs> that's there great. We go. I may use that. That's all right. Hey, you, yeah, yeah you can use it. That's good. As long, that's good. Wait, what was the saying? As long as I can use uh, what was it again? Oh, Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy. Mac I'll Daddy. use Mac Daddy. Yeah, okay. You use Gen 2. <laughs> that works. That works for me. All right. So. And then, then final on the table, guys, uh, we've got... Now, this is a fixed blade from Case, and this it, is a Winkler. It is a Winkler. Um, Get it out. There uh, you go. So we worked with we worked with Daniel Winkler, and, and those, I'm sure your customers are very well aware who he is, but yeah. he made some of the, the premier knives, and a lot of those were for special forces. And um, so we enlisted. We actually met him at SHOT Show probably five years ago and decided that you know, we could do an American Hero series. And this this knife was designed with Daniel Winkler and Kevin Holland, and it is it is a beautiful knife. Obviously, it's oh, got it's, very yeah, signature beautiful. Winkler look to it. Yeah. Um, and what a lot of people don't know with collaborations, you know, I told you about Tony Bowes. When, when we bring Tony in, he'll build us a tear-apart knife, and he'll kind of walk us through how to do it, and then mm -hmm. we will do it. When we do this with Winkler, uh, this, this steel is actually fabricated in his – Facility. Yeah, because he has his own special alchemy that he does yes. with the steel that he uses. Yes. Yeah. So that's an 80 CRV2 steel. Um, he will use that. Now, we grind the steel, so we get the blanks mm -hmm. from him. We grind the steel. Uh, he treats the handle material. So this is uh, that's why this looks so authentic, Winkler, yeah. is that this is the exact same material he does, and he treats it. He kind of ages it, and, and then we take it, obviously— we coat it, we do the coatings, we do the grinding, uh, we finish, we, we apply the handle, we finish the knife, and every sheath is custom to just the particular knife. So those yeah, are all custom great. made. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, these Winkler knives are, 
I mean, they're fantastic. And oh, we, yeah. We've expanded on this line. Winkler does and, incredible work. And we feel like that we've got a long partnership with Winkler as well. So Cool. Uh, cool stuff. And yeah, I mean, outside of the case on the sheath, if I'd pulled that out, I would have been like, oh, it's a Winkler. It's a Winkler. Yeah. It's a Winkler, ab absolutely. So, uh, and, and again, it's, it, it is very authentic, Daniel Winkler, and, uh, but, but made collaboratively, truly, uh, both at Winkler and at Case. So That's it's great. pretty exciting for us. Awesome. Cool. Well... That was a dive. You man. think you, you think you got something? I think I might I might have learned yeah. something one or two things. Hopefully you guys so. have as well. So um, now as promised, uh, at the beginning of this video, we said that we were going to do a giveaway at the end. Yes. So Case has brought some knives for us to give away. We actually have three, three right? Yes. Three knives to give away. And I have it in my pocket because I want one. So <laughs> I might enter I have the giveaway. Two knives to give away. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so we're, we're giving one away away uh, one of the assisted knives. Or three. Three, three of the three assisted, of assisted knife. knife. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the way, so this is how you guys win it. Is down in the description. There's going to be a link. Follow that link. Fill out the form. Uh, that way we have your email and stuff, so we can get a hold of you guys. And, and then let us know down in the comments what is your favorite case pattern, and then share this video. So share the video. Let us know what your favorite case pattern is, and fill out the form. Nice and easy. Easy enough, right? <laughs> easy enough. And that's a great. That is a great knife. Oh Again, yeah. yeah. Kickstart uh, that patented technology we have, but it's it's a great knife. And being in the trapper, so you've got yeah, yeah. you've got the the basic of case with uh, with the modern. I, I think you guys modern pick, element. picked a per yeah perfect one to walk the line between kind of where yes. you're at, where you're going, and, and where you've been. Yeah, yeah we, so. we think so too. So that's I'm awesome. glad you feel that way. Cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, hopefully you guys learned something along with us and. Uh, Good luck to everybody entering to win. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for coming by. All right, Zach. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys next round. All right. I think we're ready to... Mari. Mari. I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to say Murray. I know I'm going to say Murray, hey, go I'm ahead. trying. I'm trying to say Mari. You can say it either way. I promise. Like, I, will not, I, will not, I won't even flinch. I will be... Uh, well, I want the audience to know. Yeah, you know? that's right. That that's way they right. know who to blame when yeah, they get the information. Yeah. <laughs>